Halo tested. Now we get to the interesting results. Of the 16 studies performed, over half of the results show a positive effect in human models. I mean, who would have known that halo testing, the most aggravating steroid out of all of them, can actually improve fertility parameters? Vigor, Steve, here in this video, we're going to discuss anabolic androgenic steroids versus male fertility. I looked at all of the scientific evidence so you don't have to. I found 169 studies about male fertility in the context of using anabolic androgenic steroids, but I only looked at the testosterone derivatives, the dihydrotestosterone derivatives, the 19-nortestosterone, the nandrolone derivatives. I'm going to save all of the studies performed on exogenous testosterone for testosterone replacement therapy, for example, for another video titled TRT versus fertility, because there's thousands of studies performed in that context. And for this video, I'll probably look at approximately a thousand studies as well. I found 169 studies which are applicable to the context of this video. So before we get into it, please like the video, leave a comment for the algorithm, and consider subscribing if you haven't already. If you want to vote for the upcoming deep dives or join the weekly vigorous Q&A, which is always on Saturday, consider joining the YouTube or Patreon memberships. Okay, so for this video, I'm just going to focus on the testosterone derivatives, which we all come to know and love for overall bodybuilding and fitness aspirations. Steroids are, of course, very good for muscular development, but deleterious for fertility and overall semen parameters. Or are they? I actually found a couple of anabolic androgenic steroids which might be beneficial in the context of fertility if you're currently subfertile, perhaps after a steroid cycle. So stay tuned, we're going to discuss all of that. And I use the following search parameters on PubMed, PubMed Central, ResearchGate, ScienceDirect, as well as Google Scholar. I combined the generic steroid name or its chemical name or the various brand names, if they are available, with testes or testicles, sperm, semen, spermatosa, fertility, reproduction, as well as Leydig cells or Sertoli cells to really get an accurate indication of how these particular steroids affect the reproductive system of males. I look for adult men over 19 years old in various stages of health, ranging from completely infertile or subfertile, where the semen parameters fall below the reference ranges established by the World Health Organization in 2021, as well as completely normal, fertile men in good states of health. I excluded the females, even though I did find some scientific evidence on how a particular anabolic energetic steroids affect fertility in women. So long story short, steroids in the context of female pregnancy, that's a terrible idea, whether they actually prevent pregnancy from occurring or induce abortions during later stages of pregnancy. Ladies, if you're thinking about conceiving in the near future, stay away from steroids. And the same could be said for men, thinking about taking steroids in the near future. If you're thinking about conceiving, just stay clear. For this video, I didn't include the non-translated studies, whether those were in German or Russian, Italian, Japanese, unless a translated abstract was available with enough information to draw a substantial conclusion from. So I would say, considering the entire body of knowledge regarding steroids or testosterone derivatives and their overall effect on fertility parameters, whether that's in humans or animals, I would say that this video includes approximately 90 to 95% of everything that's currently available. I classified the studies into positive effects, so fertility parameters would improve, whether that's in human or animal models, a neutral effect, so maybe during the steroid treatment, fertility parameters actually went down or worsened, but there's some sort of way to mitigate that. Or after discontinuation, fertility parameters returned to baseline before steroid treatment. And then there's negative studies, of course, where overall fertility parameters, semen parameters went down significantly. So the main difference between a neutral and negative study is in most cases the matter of a follow-up or a longer study duration. You can find all of the references down below in the YouTube description section. I might have to put them on a document and share that on Dropbox or something so you can get all of the scientific literature down there. I summarized all of the scientific evidence into a short sentence so you know exactly what it's about. And I classified them into positive human studies, neutral human studies, negative human studies, positive animal studies, neutral animal studies, and negative animal studies. Let's look at the results. I'll put them on the screen right now so you can follow it along. Of all of the studies which are performed on anabolic androgenic steroids in general, in most cases, these are observational studies. 
I didn't look at the animal studies because there's simply too many of them, but I did look at the human studies in this context. Steroids in general, of the 25 studies I could find on human subjects, 16 have a negative result and nine have a neutral result, with none of them resulting in a positive outcome regarding fertility parameters. Keep in mind that all of these studies have been performed on steroids in combination, steroid cycles, or looking at steroids as a whole, only neutral or negative outcomes when it comes to human subjects. So let's look at each steroid when they're studied individually. This is just an overview, guys, so you have it right in front of you. We'll get more into depth a little bit later into this video. Of the 12 studies performed on boldenone, there are 11 negative animal studies. Of Terinibol, only one negative human study. One testosterone dihydroboldenone, I couldn't find any studies out there that showed its effects on overall fertility parameters. Drostanolone, Mastrone, there's only one study which has a negative effect in animal models. Halotestin, now we get to the interesting results. Of the 16 studies performed, over half of the results show a positive effect in human models. I mean, who would have known that halotestin, the most aggravating steroid out of all of them, can actually improve fertility parameters. And it's the same case with Provirin. I found 35 studies performed on humans and animals, and 18 human studies show a positive outcome. That's over half of all of the studies that's available. Half of that show a neutral result, and half of that, four studies, show a negative result. So it doesn't mean that Provirin is completely in the green. There's still four studies which show a negative result. The same can be said for halotestin, but the large majority of the studies performed in humans for halotestin and provirin for that matter show a positive outcome in subfertile men. Keep in mind that these studies were performed in the 60s, 70s, 80s, and 90s at the latest. And after that, there have been no follow-up studies regarding its positive effect on fertility parameters because selective estrogen receptor modulators came to market around the same time. So I feel that the medical community now favors uh, enclomiphene clomid Novidex or other serms for fertility purposes over halotestin or provirin. Still, interesting results. We'll get more into depth a little bit later. Of the single study that has been performed on primabolin, there's one negative animal model. Dianabol, of the limited scientific evidence that we have, the large majority show a negative result in both human studies and animal models. I couldn't find anything on Superdrol regarding its effects on overall fertility parameters. Metribolone, also very limited, also a negative result on human and animal studies. I couldn't find anything on check drops. There's a lot of scientific evidence regarding female dogs and its impairing effects on fertility on female dogs, but we're looking for male animals or male humans. So regarding male fertility parameters, there's nothing to see here. Nandrolone, of the 26 studies that I was able to find, the large majority show a negative result, both in human studies and animal models, and actually the animal models comprises over half of the studies that I was able to find. Oxandrolone, Anivar, I was only able to find three studies. One study of the humans falls into a neutral result, we'll discuss that a little bit later, and the others fall into a negative result regarding the animal models. Anadrol, both negative and neutral results in animal models, but nothing on human subjects. We'll save the testosterone for another video, so stay tuned for that. And if you're not subscribed yet, now's a good time to do so, so you can get it right when it drops. Trestolone, a very compelling body of knowledge regarding its negative effects in human subjects. I mean, Trestolone meant was designed as a male contraceptive, but in most cases, complete azospermia was not established. And there's also neutral and negative results in animal models. Trembolone, I'm honestly a little bit disappointed that I couldn't find any more scientific evidence regarding Trembolone's effect on fertility parameters, because, well, Trembolone at one point or another was approved for human use in particular medical conditions, but I was only able to find one single study performed on humans with a negative outcome, and the rest show a neutral or negative outcome in animal models. I couldn't find anything on Stenbolone, and the large majority of the studies performed on Winstrol show a negative effect in animal models. So that's 169 studies that I reviewed for you guys, not as scrutinously as the studies that I reviewed for the Boldenone versus Kidney Health video series. Still, we'll have to take all of this at face value because otherwise we'll be 
researching these studies until the end of time, basically until he death, and nobody has time for that. But when you look at this body of knowledge and this little summary of the studies that I was able to find for you guys, besides Halotestin and Proviron, everything pretty much falls into the red. Okay, let's look into these studies a little bit more in depth and start reviewing them together. It won't exactly be a deep dive like previous videos, but trust me, it'll be deep enough for impregnation leading into conception later on. And if you're a researcher and you're going to use my material, which I link down below for your own research purposes, because again, there's not a single study out there that has this many references in regards to steroids versus fertility. And it might even be double that after we finished the TRT versus fertility video. Let's say I'll have 350 references by the time we're done with this subject. So if you use all of my material for research purposes, I expect to be credited and make sure that your study actually passes the peer review process and gets published. An honorable mention in the acknowledgements is highly appreciated. So I can find my own name on PubMed too. Okay, let's go into the general anabolic energetic steroids with regards to human male fertility. 